Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm going to bring you some news of an important abstract from IWCLL, the International Workshop on CLL uh, 2023. Uh, this is about resistant mutations in chronic lymphocytic leukemia patients who are treated with ibrutinib. What was the bottom line? Mutations at BTK C481 are the most common mutations seen in pooled trial data of chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL patients who are being treated by, with ibrutinib. These lead to resistance and progressive disease. Other resistant mutations um, are seen include one at, at PCL gamma 2, which are much rare, less than 5%, in BTK mutations affecting the L528 location that incurs in less than 1% of patients on ibrutinib. That number, by the way, compares to about 54% reported with xanabrutinib, another BTK inhibitor. Understanding these mutations and how well different BTKIs, DP, BTK inhibitors, do with each can help guide the choice of BTK inhibitors and the appropriate sequencing of therapies. Who performed the research and where was it presented? The research was presented at IWCLL. The poster number was, or the abstract number was 1549556, Bruton's tyrosine kinase and phospholipase C gamma 2 mutation profiles in pooled analysis of patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia treated with ibrutinib. It was presented by Dr. Ahn, who's an assistant professor at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston, Massachusetts, and it was presented at the International Workshop on CLL, IWCLL conference that was held in Boston, Massachusetts, October 6th through 9th, 2023. Let's get a little background. Most CLL patients treated with ibrutinib and the other approved BTK inhibitors do very well with durable remissions. They have drastically improved outcomes and prolonged survi survival for CLL patients. They work by blocking signaling from the B cell receptor, which is on the cell surface, and they do that by inhibiting BTK. When since CLL cells are addicted to the B cell receptor signaling, blocking it leads to excellent disease control. However, over time, mutations are acquired that may confer resistance and lead to progressive disease. Resistance to BTK inhibitors is often due to changes in the BTK binding site where the inhibitors attach to block the pathway. That's most commonly at C481. This prevents all the irreversible or covalently binding BTK inhibitors, that would be ibrutinib, acalabrutinib, and xanabrutinib, the three that are approved, from binding so they can no longer inhibit BTK. Another way the cancer escapes control is the downstream activation of the pathway by a gain of function mutation in PCL gamma 2 genes that turn the signaling back on. It's been blocked above by the BTK inhibition, but then it's turned back on by the PLC gamma 2 genes that turn it back on. This is much rarer. BTK 481 is by far the most common mutation seen found in BTK inhibitory resistant CLL. New non C481 BTK mutations have recently been discovered, including BTK L528W, which has been reported in patients with ibrutinib, xanabrutinib, and pertabrutinib. BTK L528W was reported in 54 and 4% of patients treated with xanabrutinib and ibrutinib respectively, and is associated with resistance to pertabrutinib, which is a new, not yet approved treatment for CLL that is reversible or non-covalently binding and binds in a different way, and is us usually works well in those patients who have developed a BTK C481 mutation. This research pooled data to look at the various resistances in, in uh, resistance mutations that developed uh, while patients were on ibrutinib helps us understand how these mutations 
affect the cells and therefore affect the patients. Participants and methods. Blood samples were collected over six clinical trials evaluating ibrutinib. 419 patients in total were studied. What were the results? There were 247 previously untreated and 172 relapsed refractory patients. The median age was 69, 46% had unmutated IGHV, 39% had deletion 17P or TP53 mutations. At the median follow-up of 43.7 months, 132 patients had progressed or died, including 69 progressive uh, di uh, disease events in the relapsed refractory group and 22 progressive uh, disease events in the treatment-naive group. 17% of patients developed some kind of BTK mutation. More than half the patients with the mutation were not progressing when their blood was sampled. BTK mutations were eight-fold higher among patients with relapsed refractory CLL at 35% than those with previously untreated CLL at 4%. Similarly, PLC gamma 2 mutations were more frequently found in relapsed refractory CLL at a rate of 14% than previously untreated CLL at 6%. In vitro or in test tube data concerning effective doses showed that pertubrutinib does very well with mutated C481, which makes sense because it binds differently, and it's also been proven outside of the test tube in the actual humans and actual clinics that it works well for mutated C481. The three irreversible BTK inhibitors do not do well at killing cells when the C481 mutation is found. Ibrutinib had the most potent cell killing activity against the rare resistant mutation T4741. Acalabrutinib has the most potent cell killing activity against L528W. Pertubrutinib and Xanabrutinib do not do well in vitro with mutated L528W. Let's talk a little bit about what types of mutations were seen. As I mentioned before, the most frequently detected mutation affecting uh, a BT, was affecting BTK C481, which included uh, C481S, 16% of all patients that were evaluated, um, C481Y and C481R at lower numbers. BTK T4 4741 in L528W were rare, found in only 0.7% or two previously untreated and one relapsed refractory CLL in 0.5, two previously untreated CLL patients respectively. So very rare numbers for those two mutations. 64 or 15% of patients had mutations exclusively at the BTK C481 locus. Five or one percent of the patients had concurrent, con concurrent BTK C481 mutations and non C481 mutations. So the majority just had the BTK mutations. Two or less than one percent had non C481 mutations only, so very rare. Two patients with BTK L528W had uh, concurrent BTK mutations and achieved partial remission to ibrutinib before progressive disease. And the durations of the responses were quite respectable, 20 and 60 months respectively. So what are our conclusions and why do we care about all these mutations? Our understanding of all the mechanisms of resistance to BTK inhibitors, including ibrutinib, is still incomplete. Some CLL patients progress, and we don't know why. We can't find any mutations that explain why the drug is no longer working. Some have resistance mutations, but don't progress, at least for some long periods of time. However, this research advances our knowledge about some of the more common and some of the more rare resistance mechanisms in play. The study, and more like it, can help guide choices of BTK inhibitors 
which therapies are likely to stop working, the best drug sequencing for each patient. More data is needed to confirm these findings and to look for uh, the other reasons why these great drugs eventually fail CLL patients. But this research advances our understanding as to why they stop working. While CLL patients are living longer and better lives, there is still much work left to do. Thanks for listening. Stay strong. We are all in this together.